Well, we'll talk about that that bigger picture about the, the three games that Manchester United have played against City in the in the calendar year. But in terms of Ten Hag's assessment of this game, where he said it was a decent first half, but he felt he needed to maybe use his bench and get a bit more uh, attacking power on the pitch. Do you think that was the the right assessment? Do you agree with it? Do you agree with the decision, the, the, the tactical no, I mean, decisions? I, I think I agree with what you said about the fact the first half wasn't that bad and I thought it was OK and I thought the defensive side of things were fine and City did you know, struggle to create openings and they got the goal, which was I think was a soft penalty personally, but it is what it is. Um, but I was asking the question as soon as the substitution was made. When I saw Matt Tomney alongside Ericsson in midfield, I thought that was brave if not a little bit reckless. I didn't think it would work, and I thought Amrabat must have been injured, but we've just had it confirmed to us that he wasn't injured. So I don't think it's been a, I don't think it was a great day for his substitutions. I think his substitutions last season were amazing, and every time he made substitutions, it improved the team's performance. I thought today, actually, the, imp the substitutions made the team's performance worse and opened them up more. So I didn't think it was a great day, but... You know, I'm in the camp of, I, don't, I think I've seen this now, four or five managers down the line of basically second season, third season, where they really struggle. And we end up rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Exactly the same things happen again, where we start talking about the same stuff. No one's been able to unlock Manchester City. The performances of Manchester United and City have not been good. They haven't been good. I was at the cup final, sat there with 90,000 other people. The performance wasn't good by Manchester United. That performance in the second half today, to be honest with you, was appalling. And to be fair, I think this, you know, Amrabat coming off emptied midfield. I don't think that was the right assessment of that particular performance. But my, my anger isn't with Eric Ten Hag. I don't believe he's the fundamental cause of this problem. I, I, I get what you're saying in terms of, you know, rinse, repeat, different managers and stuff like that. But we're now into the second season. And we, we'd all say, you know, it went well last season from where Manchester United were. But you, none of us here can still explain what Manchester United try to do in terms of how they play. He's been here now, what, nearly 18 months. We've seen Unai Emery come in at Aston Villa. We've seen Postacoglu come in now at Tottenham in a very short space of time. Now, that doesn't mean you win every week, but when you go to the games, you know what you're going to see. We still don't know what you're going to see with Manchester United. You tell me how they play with the ball. No, Karen, and look, to be honest with you, I can't disagree with you. Um, those managers that you're talking about coming into stable environments... They've currently got over their heads a guy all over the news going to own 25% that's going to basically come out and oh, whine. Oh, Gary, Gary, listen, no, listen, no, why, why, no, why will no. you not listen? What, what, no. Why do I have to listen to you, but you won't listen to me? Come on. Right. So, basically, you imagine you're in a business, you're in a football club, and you, the news is that there's a guy going to come in and basically wipe out the whole football department. Have you, you imagine what's going on inside that football department this moment in time, in and around Eric Ten Hag. It is toxic and embedded negativity. They all think they're all going to lose their jobs. I know you can say carry on with it, you know, the professional, but you imagine what's happening. Jim Rackley's going to come in with Dave Brailsford, they're going to sweep out the football department, they're all going to get moved away. That's what's happening. And I honestly believe this toxicity that exists at this club, and has done for years, by the way, it just eats alive. Every manager that comes and every player that comes. Okay. You know, so, Harry Maguire okay. was going to go to Manchester City. Mason Mount was going to go to Liverpool. They come here and it's a graveyard for them. Are we going to keep blaming the, the, okay. the, ki the, kids, in no, the, the no. kids in the class? No. The, are we going to blame the head teacher? OK, so we, we can't analyse anything can. Eric Ten Hag does or can. any performance from Manchester United. I've just every said, time they get I've beat just said, I've just seen report today. Okay. But what I'm You're saying poor. is, everything goes back to the ownership. Of course, it's not right. The supporters are not happy. But what you're talking about is a style of football. What he's doing on the training pitch, Monday to Friday, every day, has got nothing to do with Jim Ratcliffe coming in. What does he want Ka those Ka players Ka to do? Right. When they're building up from the back and we see every Ka top team in the league do it, what are Manchester United trying to do with the ball? They're playing underdog football and they have done Ka since Ra he come in. Uh, Gary, let me finish. Uh, uh, you just spoke yeah. before. They play counter-attack and they play a lot of long balls. No other top team plays like that. That's got nothing to do with what's going on above him. What is he doing on the training pitch? Look, plays he brings in, and what's he asking I the can, team to look, do? Cara, you I, can't I, see it. Cara, I completely agree with you. They've allowed another manager to dictate policy and the tail wag the dog on recruitment. They brought eight players in from basically a league that Eric Ten Hag thinks he trusts players. And they did the same with Oli, the same with Jose, the same with uh, Louis van Gaal. The problems are above it. I'm not saying that he's not culpable for the mistakes that he's making. He's got injuries to Martez, who helps him play out. He, he's got injuries to Varane, and Varane's only just coming back. So there are issues why he can't play out from the back. He's not got Casemiro in midfield, so he's got three players who fundamentally are his connection from defence. Cas Casemiro's goal. one of the worst decisions no, they make. No, what I'm saying to you is, is those players, they'll help him play from the back. Mm. Well, obviously, I don't like the football at all. I have no idea what the repeated patterns are that they're trying to put in place. But the bigger picture of Manchester United is that we've seen great managers with great reputations and great players with great reputations come here and just die in front of our eyes. Why is that? How do we answer that question? 
Do you know how Eric Ten Hag is, is trying to play at Manchester United? No, not really. I'd have to agree with what's been said. It's obviously a difficult watch. It's been a struggle. Obviously, the expectations last year was can he get in the hands of the trophy and get top four, which he managed to do. But this year has definitely been a problem. Can we go back to recruitment's huge at a football club? Of course it is. And there's too many players who have come to the club over the last 18 months, two years, who have not been good enough. And obviously, we're well aware that Man United, whatever, the price is involved. United always seem to have to pay over the top, which we, it seems to be part of the package. The concern is obviously Dan Hag's brought players in that, you, that obviously he's obviously worked with, and you think he'd know them a bit better and their characters, but they've come to Man United and it just feels a bit too much for some of them. We can analyse the game today in terms of the physicality, the midfield. They're like, they're like children out there. They haven't got that physical presence to get around the park. And too many of the players who've come in for the fees involved haven't done the business. Just on the, the point about them being players who've played under Ten Hag and have come from Eredivisie, there are eight players in that group who have Eredivisie experience, maybe haven't come directly from there, but that, is, that has been part of their, but their football progress. That goes back, back to what Gary said before, and he's right. Sometimes when we talk about the top at Manchester United, I think there's sometimes this feeling around Manchester United that the manager doesn't get what he wants. I actually, Gary's right. I think the manager you get too much power. What's going to happen when Eric Ten Hag moves on? You've still got you know all that sort of group of players. They're sort of embedded with him. And when I say I'm more critical of the managers, I got to go back to last summer. And I know Casemiro did well at times last season, but I go back to that. Signing him and Ericsson was not things that a top football club in their position should be doing. They're at the end of the careers. They've had to replace them already with Mason Mount and Amrabat, and we're questioning whether they're good enough. So 12 months later, they're replacing players they bought 12 months before. That's just not joined up thinking at a top football but club. I think so when things aren't right at a club, Dave, I think one bad decision seems to follow another. Yeah, We've yeah. seen other clubs. And Man United were doing it great. Maybe if you look back 10, 15 years ago, and they would get a lot of credit for it. Obviously, the manager there, Ferguson, you, David Gill, who were getting a lot of applause for the structure of the club. But now, it seems to be, obviously, chaos, obviously, at ball level, which there is, which we're, yeah, but we know. And it, it, they're taking that onto the pitch. If, 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 go on, sorry, sorry, mate. What about the decision? I feel like I'm just attacking Eric Ten Hag. But a big decision he's made, who's made captain? Bruno Fernandes should be not be a captain. We sat here with two Manchester United captains. The Bruno first thing Fernandes I would do... is a captain for Manchester I, United. I, I, after today, I haven't watched him again, obviously. Um, I would definitely take the captaincy off him, 100%. I know it's a big decision. Obviously, they've changed the captaincy with Maguire. But Fernandes is not captain material. I think he's a talented player, no doubt about it. But what I saw today with him again, I know we've discussed this many times before, was at Liverpool last year. His whinging, his moaning, his throwing his arms up in the air constantly. It's not a, it's, it really isn't accepted. What we saw today, I'm thinking, I would take that off him. Because I think you have to start somewhere. You're talking about where do you make change? You're talking about board level, managers. I would start to that because the manager is capable of doing that. And, and hold his hand up and say, listen, I've got it wrong. Fernandes is a brilliant footballer. But in terms of captain material, he's the opposite to what I would want in a captain. I think it all goes back to what Kara said, is how are Man United going to play? We've, we've seen the signings there. So, and I don't want to bring City in, into this, but Man City signed players for a style of play. The players that we've seen that Man United have signed, we don't know where they're going to fit in. So you've got Hoyland, who's an excellent footballer, but he's playing with wingers who want to come inside and shoot. So how is he supposed to get the chemistry with the players he has along side him. Then you go into midfield, which the guys have, have, have talked about. Are you playing with two holders? Are you playing with, with one? If a sub comes in, does he know what job to do? And then you look at the, the back four. It was always going to be difficult for Man United today because of the back four. Evans is, is similar to my age, obviously coming from, from Leicester, he's had his injuries. And I just think for, for Man United to be in this position now, after the money they have spent, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can have whatever manager you want. You need to have. You know, Mike, you make a good point. I think if you come watch Man United today, we've obviously come to the, You do not know what you're going to get with Man United. And that's all right if you're a small club, you turn up at United, they've won the last few games, okay, they get out of jail. Their record, their goals for and against, the players who are coming in, they're not hitting the ground running, players are coming in with injuries. It seems like whoever's making decisions in the background with the manager, they're getting it wrong at the moment and they're big mistakes. It's just that Micah says the same age as Johnny Evans. You must have been a pundit for about 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are 35. I'm 